As you see, Will Craddock on the left, he's very disinterested in what's going on here. So, these are two players if you guys actually watch SCG Live quite a bit, you're pretty familiar with. Uh, when I was in Dallas, Will Craddock, uh, I was in Dallas doing coverage with OSIP for the first time. Will Craddock lost the finals of the Standard Open and then ran up the chain and won the latest Open Sneak and Show. Oops, he had an unbelievable weekend in Dallas. Was almost back-to-back -back champion, challenging Jerry Thompson for his crown. Lost, he got really close. Lost the finals and then was like, oh man, losing sucks. I'm just not going to do that tomorrow. Yeah, so he just didn't do that yeah. anymore. Um, so he won with Sneak and Show and Legacy against John Pennick from Springfield, Missouri, who you guys clearly know, friends with Jerry. Um, very quietly a master. Very, very good musician. Doesn't play as much anymore. You see him resolving all your balls and missing as only he can. Um, <laughs> but we're going to have a blue-white-red flash versus Naya matchup here. These players play for top eight. What what type of Naya are we talking about? It's not Blitz. It's definitely not Blitz. This is actually more of a, uh, this is more of a reanimator deck. This is a reanimator deck. Yeah, we got some Grizzly Salvages, some Burial Rites, three Mulchers, three Lingering Souls. So this might just be, yeah, this is a... It's a, the deck. Yeah, it's a Junk Reanimator. Junk Reanimator. Yeah, it's actually Junk Reanimator. Easy to kind of get confused. But yeah, it's Junk Reanimator, and he actually has a main deck opposite that. He has like two Centaur Healers, two Arbor Elves, two Greater Behemoths, two Lot of the Trolls. Um, you know, his little uh, Unburial Rites package, all that stuff. So just a good card deck that actually has Unburial Rites. So this is, you know, a... Uh, the deck we've been talking about pretty much all day. Yeah, this is a deck that's obviously very popular in the format, has had a ton of success, actually won the MOCS too. It's not that you knew that. Today? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not surprised. Yeah. So and you say, you say it's popular, but uh, I am of the belief that it's not popular as it should, not as popular as it should be. That's probably true. It's, <laughs> the deck is much better than uh, people give it credit for. As we see, Craddock is resolving a Mulcher, two Restoration Angels, Navison's Pilgrim, and a Woodland Cemetery. Which will go straight the to the cards. Um, you see Pennick has, has missed with his Augur Bolas, has resolved a Boros Reckoner to kind of hold down the fort here. And you're going to see Craddock flash back that Lingering Souls and come across for two, getting the two more Spirit Tokens out. So he's off to a pretty good start here. You know, Pennick isn't doing bad. You know, he does have, a, he does have you know, his mana online, a two drop and a three drop, but he needs to get some things started here pretty quickly. Well, John's deck uh, differs from some of the, again, we call it Flash, but it's not really Flash anymore. <laughs> Um, decks by having two Wrath Effects main with a Supreme Verdict and a Blasphemous Act. Uh, the Blast Act to go with the Boros Reckoner in addition to the Harvest Pyre. So, as we were talking before, two of that effect, but you know, you can only have one Harvest Pyre. That deck building theory going into this build, which has obviously served him well at X and 1, uh, 8 and 1. Yeah. It's not a bad record. And you see Penix Mountain is working overtime, making those clifftop retreats and those sulfur falls come into play on tap. So important. Yeah, absolutely important to make sure those lands do come into play on tap. But with Sacred Foundry coming in, there are more ways to do that from Gate Crash. But Penix now is in the sweet spot for his deck. You see Will play an, play an Overgrown Tomb, where he has the four mana available to bluff many different things, but Will... I don't really care too much. He's going to cast an Obzidat Ghost Council through that Cavern of Souls, which is on Spirit. Huh. So, there will be no countering that, and we've got some Lingering Souls tokens coming across now. Well, John does look, does look a little flooded. He's got a, an Azorius Charm, so he's got some redraws. He is drawn to two Wraths, if that's indeed what he's going for. But um, is it Charm? Some more redraws. Uh, but... Obzidat doesn't really care about wrath effects. No, it doesn't. You, you know, gotta, you gotta kill that one in very specific ways. As long as Craddock does remove that, and he already has moved it onto the tape, so you can see that's out of play and waiting to come back next turn. Basically, so you have to take care of this stuff, and then you have to take care of Obzidat. And Pennick is going to draw to a discard two with the Is It Charm. You see a Boros Reckoner and a Ghost Quarter. The cards that he draws there, so it doesn't find anything useful. And he's being attacked from, you know, even though it is creatures, AJ, multiple different angles right now. Yeah. The uh, Obsidat, you know, doesn't need combat to deal damage and is wrath proof. Then Lingering Souls count like four creatures for the cost of one card. What are you going to do? Searing Spear them all down? Yeah. And they all fly, you know, Reckoner and Augur not playing defense very well at all here. So you're quite, see, quite an offense. So you're going to see Get It. Pennick, excuse me, play that Ghost Quarter. Does only have one source of white mana currently. And Ghost Quarter does not really shine too much in this matchup. It can't blow up a Cavern of Souls, but I think Cavern's already done its dirty work right now. For sure. And you're going to see Pennick kind of deciding what he wants to do. Was considering attacking with the Augur of Bolas, but you're just going to see a Boros Reckoner come across, it looks like. And you do. The uh, Augur probably uh, resigned to Chump DV here on the Obsidat. Ooh, Chump plus Blink. 
Panic yeah. uh, does have an angel. And you just see Restoration Angel in John's hand, ready at a moment's notice. Obviously, that's going to come back into play. We're drain you. A gain two and a drain two here by that big boy. And we'll see how Panic is going to use that Restoration Angel. Does he want to block with Augur Volos and then flash it? Does he want to actually blink the... Uh, the Boros Reckoner, so that can be another blocker, as we're going to see a Thrag Tusk Oof. right away here from Craddock. Haymakers! Yeah. I gotta the, love it. That's what the format's all about. <laughs> Panic can't really race against that. You saw them I mean, the attacks with the Reckoner trying to kind of consider racing a little bit. Hard enough to race an Obzidab, yeah. now a Thrag Tusk, too. Yeah. Two a turn was tough, but five more, plus the extra creature. Well, here's... Without the uh, opposite out attacking, the decision was made for him. Ooh, there's a Supreme Verdict. He will need uh, a little more than that. He's short the white source uh, and needs to deal with a 3-3 and an opposite out after that. So Other than that, he's good. Yeah, definitely, definitely not even close to out of the woods yet, <laughs> but it is the first step in the right direction, I will say that. And if things do actually do come down to it, I'm checking his deck to see if he has a basic planes in there, and actually he doesn't, so he can't actually go no. for himself to uh, to fix his mana to catch And sure that. enough, he decides the Wrath, hoping to draw white and ways to deal with all those cards, uh, is pretty unrealistic. He's just going to take the spear, and I don't know, what do you think his game plan is here? Find uh, Blasphemous Act? I think Combo that's, kill him? I think that's one of the big steps right now, as you see... John does draw a Thought Scour. He also has Snapcaster Mage in his hand, so maybe he can turn it over that way. And he is going to start his turn off by Thought Scouring himself, it looks like. As he's reaching for that Sulfur Falls. I think the one the one Blasphemous Act, a card that we've talked about a little bit today, uh, is a card that can actually save him. You see a Searing Spear and a Mystery Card, and a Thought Scour is drawn. Well, we're getting to the point where, you know, you can also start drawing to Harvest Pyre and just combo kill that way. Yep. Or, or both. Why not both? Yeah, he's got to do a nice job of like using his life total and trying to get through as many cards as he possibly can. As you see Obsidat come back here. And you guys don't see Will Craddock attacking with that Obsidat, which I actually like. Uh, he's dodging. He's basically playing around Azorius Charm on yep. that, which would be a major annoyance when he has no reason to attack with it and run into that. Yeah, he'll just take the... Uh... Oros Reckoner. <laughs> so, the Obsidat... Staying out, out of charm range, doesn't want to get, you know, double blocked or anything. Just yeah. drain two every turn, totally legitimate. Okay. And we are shortcutting on saying, you know, Harvest Pyre being a kill. For those of you guys who don't know the combo at home, of course, Harvest Pyre removing a ton of cards from the graveyard, targeting the Boris Reckoner. Boris Reckoner gets super mad when it gets hit by anything, <laughs> and it never, you know, hits the owner of the spell. It just decides it's always going to be the opponent. So... The Harvest Fire, Boris Reckoner combo kill will deal Will a whole bunch of damage if John can get to it. The uh, the question is, is, can he actually get there? Because he is underneath a lot of pressure right now. Yes. And Will is, you know, trying to figure out his best line to play for these attacks here. And I think... Uh, Boris Reckoner doing its its duty of holding off that uh, Thrag Tusk yeah. as well. And that uh, and that Ghost Consoles. Yeah. You know, it's... it's it's stopping those big hitters and making it just a lingering souls can come across, and you can see that Will is playing just super cautious. Yeah. And now you have an unburial rights. Unburial rights. And what kind of juicy thing is he going to target here? It's going to be Restoration Angel. And we're going to see if that's going to blink out Obsidat or if that's going to blink out Thrag Tusk. So we're going to start with a Thought, Thought Scour. Scour and reevaluate. Thought Scour turns over a Thought Scour and a Hollow Fountain draws John a Sacred Foundry. Sure enough, Obsidat. Yeah. Representing like Lethal next turn. Yep, and I like this play yet again. Yep. It's very easy there to blink a Thragtus, but Thragtus doesn't have a huge effect on this game. And he is sitting pretty at 19 life. Draw step is a Searing Spear. And he can, yep. and yeah. And he's going to pack it in. Like, there's s potential to do things like Snapcaster, uh, an Azorius Charm, and Lifelink, and try and get out of it, but just coming up short. Yeah, he can tell his back is just firmly against the yep. wall, and there's no getting out of that situation there. Tried his best to draw to that one Blasphemous Act that is in his main deck, but wasn't able to find it. 
and the game will go to Craddock with Junk Reanimator. Now you obviously have Penix Eccles in front of you. You are a blue white red magician after all. Mm -hmm. What to do? What to do against the boogeyman of the format currently in Junk Reanimator? Well, he's got a couple dissipates, which are obviously quite good, and I mean, Jace theoretically good but not actually that great. <laughs> yeah. In theory, you would probably want this card here, but in reality, it probably doesn't play out that way. Uh, unless you have one of your three Rest in Peace. Which is a good card to have in the sideboard. Yes. John Pennick, uh, one of the people that I talked to before the tournament, who, you know, as I said, I just yeah. go around, and the first question I asked everybody was, how many pieces of graveyard hate do you have in your yard? And all four people that I asked said three. John was one of them, and here we are. Three rest in peace. And I'm perfectly okay with, you know, I, I typically think that with how big Junk Reanimator is right now, you probably want in between four to five pieces yep. in your deck. But with a deck like John's where you do have Thought Scours and Think... I'm not sure if he has Think Twice in his deck. He has uh, one copy. Uno, yeah. Um, but you, you're able to increase the velocity in your deck and actually get through your cards. Um, I'm, I'm okay with having three rest in peace because it is the end-all be-all yes. as far as cards are well, concerned. And he can and, actually find it. And you're not all in on it. Like... You have Dissipate for Unburial Rights, or, or what have you. Like, you don't need the rest of the piece to win. It just makes it a lot easier, because then you don't have to, like, your your Dissipates are no longer on Unburial Watch, you know? Yeah. Like, they, they, can, they are allowed to target Thrag Tusks now, yeah. or what have you. Uh, and that's a pretty big game when, you know, you only have so many counters and they have so many threats. Now, one thing to look at when you're, you know, when you're looking at Will's deck, and, it, and certainly his sideboard as well, you know, you're going to find uh, four copies of Deathrite Shaman, which are primarily for the mirror, of course. Uh, three acidic slimes, which can take care of those rest and beats and maybe mess up John's mana. John did have mana problems in that game. Not sure True. if he wants to go that route or not. Uh, he also has some additional obes of that, which is certainly going to come in. But one thing I look for in these matchups when you're playing with Red Flash is the number of cavern souls that someone has access to. Will has one in his main deck that he did draw that game to force obes of that through, which was key yes. in winning that game. But he also has an additional one in his sideboard, which you can expect to come in probably for this. Uh, it's it's hard to say. I mean, I could see him boarding it in for the Gavney Township, um, but you could also see him leaving the Township in because he has three lingering souls too. So. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely think that he's either adding a land or just cutting a colored source. Sure. Um, I also see Abrupt Decay in his sideboard. Yep. Uh, those have to be coming in against the Boros Reckoners and the Rest in Pieces. The rest in Pieces, sure. Um, so what do you what do you what do you how are you changing your deck? Like I know a, a lot of people. Uh, like to take out some of the graveyard uh, enablers, okay. such as Mulch and Grizzly Salvage, to sort of hedge against Rest in Peace, and uh, instead of, because you're not, you're no longer searching for for Thrag Tusks, you're searching for Abrupt Decays and, uh, you know, Potential, Carrot of Souls. Potentially and, Acidic Slime. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, your, your game plan has to change a lot when you're not given free reign over the graveyard. And those cards are pretty much only good when you have free reign over your graveyard. I think the first one to cut, um, you know, if, since you don't have free reign over your graveyard, is Crater of Behemoth. I think those are the first ones to go. Um, I think the Crater of Behemoth is a fantastic game one card. Lets you steal wins, lets you kill your opponent very, very quickly. That sort of thing with Unburial Rights. But I don't think that that's a sideboard card that's kind of grinded out matchup. Yeah. So I think that's probably the first one to go. And then you have the two copies of Centaur Healer as well. Um, and while Will does want to keep his life total relatively high, just because of the combos that are, you know, available with Boros Reckoner, be it Blasphemous Act or be it with Harvest Pyre, I just think that's a, that's probably his his next worst card. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't match up well against the Reckoner or the Angel, and isn't really that much of a threat. You don't get value out of it if John Azorius charms it to the top. You know, you're bricking a draw. Um, yeah, I can't really say that it's like a must cut yeah but it just seems uh you know low enough quality that i would definitely consider bringing it out you know angel of serenity is certainly isn't exciting this matchup but one thing that i think people don't you know kind of underestimate about the blue red, red flash deck is that it does actually do a pretty nice job of kind of dumbing things up with its creatures we saw boros reckoner just be awesome that game and stopping a threat tusk and an obes of that because you know will didn't want to get domed for five right um so you and they also have you know augur bola snapcast can go off the ground a little bit restoration angel can be kind of be an annoying it's in the air. So, you know, Angel of Serenity isn't a fantastic card in this matchup, but it can do a little bit of work of just clearing clearing the path to be able to get those last few points of damage through. So, 
you know, Will does have three in his main deck. Maybe he wants to chop one of those, move down to two, so he doesn't get gummed up with those because he's not really going to be able to. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a late game draw instead yeah. of a combo card. Yes. So I think that he definitely wants access to a couple of those in his deck, but having the full three, and I think we can both agree that Unbarrel Rights, the Unbarrel Rights game plan isn't, you know, 100% all systems go like it was before. Right. So you do see both players taking a look at their seven cards here. John Pennock on the right will be on the plane. You do see a rest in peace in his hand already. An uncastable rest in peace, it looks like, though. Not sure what kind of mana source he has. You see a steam fall, excuse me, a, a steam vents. And a ghost and a quarter. ghost quarter. So those are kind of exciting. You see the dissipate, Sphinx's revelation. It's like two dissipates. Yeah, there, dissipate, honestly. dissipate, a red card, maybe a harvest pyre, and a Sphinx's revelation. Uh, John, a very disciplined mulliganer. Yeah. Um, actually, during my break, what, what else would I do during my break from commentating and watching Magic? I went and watched Magic. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, Can't get I, enough. I watched John play, and it was a pretty intense game three hand um, against blue-white, like Geist of St. Traft, Rune Chantress Pike, Moorland Haunt style flash, like old school flash. Okay. And his opener was, it was lands and spells, but it couldn't possibly win. Sure. And John had already molded the five and lost a game in that matchup. So I was a little scared for him that, you know, he was going to make an emotional decision there and keep the loose one and hope to get there. But no, he made the discipline, uh, disciplined mulligan, ends up going to five again, but pulls it out. And I can't imagine that he would have won that game with the seven card in. <laughs> easy to keep seven cards there. Yeah. Very easy to do. You do see Will also to take a mulligan. So both players will be starting hopefully with six cards here in this second game. I, I kind of hope they mold, mold a two and we just see. Just off the top. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's how the game was meant to be played. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like it is. <laughs> and it looks like I think we're going to see both players keep as John does have this amount of lands here. He's going to start off with a hollow fountain. Will is going to start off with the Woodland Cemetery, and we are underway here in game number two. Jake's That's Memory Adepts, a card that you were wondering if he was going to bring in. He did elect to bring in. I like it. You know, with Rest in Peace in your deck, you can make it so that it's not so punishing Yep. to mill them. And now you're going to see an Avacyn's Pilgrim from Craddock, and he will pass the turn back. The uh, the Scars duels are... What, what, what duels are those? The M10-ish duels? Yeah, M. I call them the M duels. Yeah, uh, those are quite awkward when, you know... You have like a mana guy that you're trying to accelerate, but then you have to play it during two, and I don't know. It hurts. It's bad. There's a think twice from John. He will get a new card. See if Craddock has a Restoration Angel. Looks like he doesn't. John gonna take a draw step. Draws. Let's talk for treat softer for the past two draw steps. Uh, it's possible that he does have the Angel and didn't want to run it into a Supreme Verdict there, along with the Pilgrim, oh, and that's what that was like. the case. Four. Yes, he's perfectly fine with getting this countered as well. Yeah. Depending on the rest of the He has much higher hands, impact cards, such as Thragtus. He has the rest of his cards uh, are like almost two for ones once they resolve. Whereas Angel is just like a guy. It's like an efficient creature, you know. So you're gonna see Restoration Angel come across here. See if Craddock has a fourth land, and he does. It's a Sun Petal Grove, so all those lands come into play tap, but he will pass the turn back. Electing not to attack with the Avacyn's Pilgrim because he doesn't want to run that into a uh, Restoration Angel. Conservative and smart. John, no play on the end of Will's turn. Takes the turn back, fifth land, and it looks like he has a Reckoner and a Wrath. A Supreme Verdict, excuse me. And, we, and there it is. Looks like we don't see Craddock float any mana from the Supreme Verdict, so no Restoration Angel to come down after that. And we see a Woodland More Cemetery. More tap lands. And <laughs> just passes the turn back, so Thragtusk will not be on time here for Craddock if he did have it. Pennant draws a Snapcaster Mage for the turn. And you see Jace Memory. Jace on, on an empty board. Explain it, Cedric. Why is that good? That might be where you want to be. This is the quote-unquote driver's seat here. Um, Pennick, we'll see if he's going to start with milling or if he's going to draw. So he's nah, going to you, mill himself. You have to draw, I was about to say, you have to draw at least until you hit the rest in peace. First card right off the top, like clockwork. So he targets himself, he draws a rest in peace, he mills a Boros Reckoner, and now he's going to start daring Craddock to do something impressive. And Craddock is up for the challenge. Yeah, Obzadani. Pretty good threat. Um, I mean, Ooh. and he leaves it in play. What? 
Now that's a little bit interesting. I did not expect to see that. Now, you know, maybe his line of thought here is that, you know, they don't play a lot of Supreme Verdicts. He's already cast one. But again, I would probably want my Obzidat gone away from this scenario. Is there? Oh, it looks like he was just lamenting. I, I don't think that there's any advantage to leaving it in play, is yeah, there? I I'm think not, that was just a, an oversight. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that there and is looks an like, And it looks like John's shrugging and rapping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, and I, think, I, I think Will may have realized his error there. Yeah. It looks a little bit frustrated yeah, look, the hand Yeah, look at motions. those hand motions. Yeah. That's a facial expression of an unhappy man. Yep, so oh, yeah. gonna take care of that. John, got to be pretty happy with that exchange. Not often you get to wrap a, a nose of that. Of course, the interesting thing that's going to start happening here too, AJ, is you know he has a Snapcaster Mage in his hand. He obviously wants to get value from that instead of having it just be an ambush viper. You know, does he want to fire away with the rest of the piece now? Start milling? You know, what is, is that also a thing twice take? in his yard? Or yeah, he has get, a thing twice in his yard. He's giving up so much value. Well, it looks like he's milling ten, which is an indicator that he is going to rest in peace what it feels like to me. And there it is. And there's Rest in Peace. So those are going to go bye-bye. Thanks, twice is going to go bye-bye. And now Snapcaster's just going to have to be a 2-1 flash. And we're going to play a little game of Protect the Jace Memory. It looks like <laughs> to me. Hold strong, Jace. Kick the can and, and he's the defender. there's an angel Vanilla 5-6. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Pennock will draw a card. Pennock draws. We know, again, he does have... That's a Glacial Fortress. Boros Reckoner. He actually is going to have to draw here. Yep. Draw Mill U. Draws. Hollowed Fountain. Land, not too good. And this was kind of the risk. Well, I mean, all of the lands that Will had played up to that point were untapped... Or, or were tapped lands, yep. right? And really the only big scary thing that Will could have had there is uh, untapped seventh land angel, right? Like a Thrag Tusk, your Boris Reckoner answers pretty cleanly. Um, any other grounds guy, you know, you can chump or trade your Reckoner, and that's enough time. You know, you only need a couple turns. Uh, Ten cards is a lot. Yeah. It's a high percentage of your library. And so now you're going to see Angel Serenity coming across. We'll see if it's attacking Jason or John. Well, he marked like his pen and the, yeah, the die hasn't like moved, so it looks like... Looks so like he's going for the throat here. Three, four, and five. Crater of Behemoth still in the deck. You see Abrupt Decay as well. Behemoth is going to be the card that Will elects to take. And, you know, that was a card that I would have considered sideboarding out here, but it's actually looking pretty darn good now. Yeah. John's going to take a draw step. John runs into, looks like another land there. So now Jace is going to mill Craddock. Mill again. John's going to draw a card. He finds... Revelation. Spaces Revelation. That is a nice draw. Now, some people would say that that is a good magic card. <laughs> and here comes the Boris Reckoner. Those people all lack, lack imagination, Cedric. <laughs> Fear not. Boros Reckoner coming in. You see Krata counting his library a little bit here. And, you know... What I mean, Jace is ultimate uh, range. Yeah. And we're going to bring Jace up on the screen for you guys so you can't actually see the ultimate of this card because I got hit by it once. It is not fun. It, well, you think that drawing 20 cards would be fun. Yeah, you would think that. You uh, would think that draw 20 is, is not a big deal. It is deal. often uh, not. Wow, Cavern there for the uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth to force that through. And, you know, Will, Will is probably feeling like he's in the driver's seat right now. I mean, he. I, I don't think he feels he's in the driver's seat as much as he's hoping that this is lethal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he really is hoping that this is lethal here. As you see Crater of Behemoth be put on the stack. Beast for the Cavern coming through. It looks like he's probably just attacking John. And yeah, John hoping is it's go, lethal. Yeah, hoping it's lethal. And John drew the Sphinx's Revelation. So he's going to gain six, draw six, negate some of this damage. He's taking 14. The thinnest of margins. Yeah. At Hang two steady. lives. Hanging steady. Two HP. Two hit points left. And we'll see if the draw 20 is going to be enough. He draws a card. Draws a Glacial Fortress. So John's going to go through the contents of his hand. Does he need to find a Supreme Verdict? He has another Sphinx of Revelation. And you see it dissipate. You see a Boros right there. Thought Scour to start the turn. Th yeah, Thought Scour U is a good way to start when you're trying to deck him. Yeah, it's not so bad. And you see Will is going to count the cards in his deck. And hopefully we can get an amount. From our spotter at the table, see exactly how many cards are there. 24-ish? You got a better eye than me, Sniper. I wasn't I wasn't watching the whole time, but at the end, he like pulled four cards at the end. <laughs> so I have to assume that that's what it was. So John, that's Let's an each ultimate. draw 20, and then Jace 
like play another Jace, I guess, or at least combo kill. There are two Jaces in Penix sideboard. I mean, I'd he's like drawing a, that he he's drawing a Jace or Blast Act or Verdict or you know. Sure, he's drawing to a ton of more cards. Thought Scours. Yeah, he's drawing to a ton of cards now. There's a Thought Scour. You see him pulling, pull <laughs> you're pulling those Thought Scours for I found a couple. And that's four. See ya! It was 24. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, you don't have to count them yourself. You just got to use a little deductive logic. Yeah. Read the player, Cedric. Read the player. And you can see that Craddock is a little bit upset with how that game went. I think that stems back from the mistake with the Obsidat. Yep. You know, I think he wins that game. You know, obviously, Pedic is at two life at the end of the game. He plays a little bit differently. You know, maybe John doesn't pull the trigger on the rest in peace right away. What have you. But having that Obsidat stay there is something that I think Craddock is going to beat himself well, up it's, over. Well, it's super unintuitive, right? Like, you play your creature, and you, you play creatures to have them in play. Yeah. Right? But you're tapping out for it, and it's just so easy to go tap out from a creature, go. Yeah. But, it, like, you're, you're playing the creature to get it in play, but it immediately leaves. Yeah. And you want it to immediately leave. Yeah. That's, that's what that's, you want. <laughs> that is the good part of the card, is that it immediately leaves. Yeah. Woo! There's a ghost oh, in the booth. There's a ghost be in the booth. Haunted. There's a ghost in the booth. Get him out of here. <laughs> here, Sneezies, get him out of here. So, we're going to move on to a game three here between two of the. Uh, Two of the best players in the room, honestly. For sure. Yeah, yeah. let's let, let's not uh, mince words here. Yeah, John Pennock, Will Craddock, a fantastic match to have for round ten. These players, this is this is a good finals. Yeah, these yeah this would be a good finals of this one, absolutely. <laughs> but we have these players battling it out to make the top eight of this. At X one playing for top eight. Yeah, very impressive stuff here. Now Craddock will be on the play this game. And some of the cards that you did see him leave in and bring in. You saw Crater of Behemoth still in the deck. You saw um, Abrupt Decay still in the deck, or excuse me, brought in from the deck. We haven't seen Acidic Slime yet. We're not sure if the Death Rite Shamans came in or not. You can assume the other Obsidac came in. You can assume that additional Cavern of Souls came in. A little bit more difficult to figure out what he did sideboard out, but probably on Burial Rites, on a number of them. Yeah, um, he did go through quite a bit of his deck. Uh, we saw a couple Salvages, but I don't think we saw any Mulches. I uh, did not see a Mulch. We did see two Grizzly We saw two Grizzly Salvages and no Mulches. From what I remember. So that um that could have been, you know, some umbrella rights and some mulches. Bring in I mean, if the slimes weren't in, they probably are now. Yeah. And if all the abrupt decays weren't in, which I have to assume they were, then they definitely are now. Yeah, I agree. Um, the tip off of Rest in Peace, you gotta bring in and he's got he's got six cards, three abrupt decays, three acidic slimes. He's gotta bring in to be able to you know battle through that, I'd like to think. Yeah. He can't just play a normal game, um, but at the same time he, might, he probably just wants to hedge his bets. And you do see both players have kept seven cards. Will has started off with an Overgrown Tomb into a Godless Shrine and passing. No Accelerants. No Accelerants, no Grizzly Salvage, no Mulch. And you see John's hand. A little spell heavy, but not the worst place to be. You see a Sacred Foundry and pass. So both players look like they have kept reasonable seven card hands. And we'll see if Will has a Lingering Souls or anything to do this turn. Two mana, lot with Oh, leave up regeneration. I see. And that'll let him dodge Searing Spears and everything else there. You know it's pretty good against Lotless Troll? An angry moo cow? Yeah. <laughs> angry moo cow. Well, that was his name in design. Oh. In the R&D. Oh. You have, you have an insider tip on yeah. that? <laughs> angry moo cow. We. They decided to change the name to Boros Reckoner mm. for flavor reasons. Ugh. Flavor ruining the game. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear me and Glenn arguing about uh, Olivia? I missed that. Okay, we'll talk about it later. All right. Glenn, I'm, Glenn arguing with someone? I can't I'm believe it. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely still curious as to what the Twitterverse had to say. I have not been able to check yet. Well, here comes Lawless Troll. No fear, no aggressive. fear. Aggressive. Very aggressive. You can't live life scared. John, shrug take? Yeah. I mean, no blocks. Is it just going to be two? Looks like it's just going to be two, and we'll just pass the Yeah, I mean, you can't all in into uh, Azorius Charm. That might actually have been a sick bluff to sneak into. <laughs> yeah. Representing Restoration Angel now, Will, is John's draw step for the turn was a rest in peace. You see him play a Clifftop Retreat here, and now we're going to have a little game of representation, and we are going to see a Restoration Angel. Is this worth dissipating? Panic decides nope. that it is not. Uh, it's the same as last game, you know? Uh, Angel, while a good card, once it's already in play, it's not actually that good. The dissipate is for the things that are only good once they're already in play, such as Thrag Tusk and, say, Crater Hoof Behemoth. Well, 
you know, it just make, it just kind of begs the question on when do you pull the trigger on this dissipate? Because you know that we'll ask Cavern of Souls. You know, we have. Ooh, the, speaking of which, we have the privilege of knowing that Will boards up to two Cavern of Souls, where John does not know that, and you're going to see Thrag Tusk come it, through. I think the cavern named Octopus there. So, interesting, uh, interesting. John could dissipate. He chooses not to. That's not. Oh, I'm, get, I'm getting. I'm getting word that is not the case. Oh. oh okay. Uh, I must be mistaken. I'm sorry. It is indeed naming Beast and another Rest in Peace. See, the Rest in Peace is when uh, Will has a normal draw is not the best. But a Supreme Verdict, not the worst answer here. You know, two for two and a half yourself, sort of. Yeah, it's certainly not terrible. You know, we'll take care of a lot of the troll. We'll take care of the rest of the scenes on the front half of that Thrag Tusk, leaving Will with just a 3-3 Beast afterward. And it looks like John is going to cash this in here. Don't think you have much choice up. with the uh, lot of troll regeneration looming. Ooh, you see Will discards Angel Serenity to lot of troll. Does this that mean that he has That is the unburial rights? Oh, look at John. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can feel good about this. Hands on head. You know what that means. Craddock draws a card. In for three. He was very, very quick to discard that Angel Serenity. It makes me believe... But, Cedric, why would he give his creature plus one, plus one when it's just going to die? <laughs> it makes me believe he has an Unveil, right? Oh, and he it does. all makes sense. Angel Serenity is back. Just target my dudes. It takes care of his three dudes, his Restoration Angel, his Thraxos, his Lot Little Troll. And Pennick, if he had... I believe that's what we call play. value. Yep. You see him draw a Steam Vents for the turn. Well, that turn that he uh, passed, didn't dissipate Angel, and then yeah. took the turn back. Hey, he took, John, a, he I took mean, a turn we, off. We saw John play a match earlier today, and he played equally as conservatively with his dissipates and was punished against John. Um, you know, John, as I was saying, very disciplined player, but sometimes you just got to be a little aggressive, yeah. you know? You just got to kind of cross your fingers and hope it works out. Because now you see the world of trouble he's in, and he realizes it too. Yeah. That if I, you know, I need to deal with this angel serenity, and if I deal with that, I got to deal with what's coming after it, and that's not going to be easy. No. And you can see the contents of his hand: two rest in peace, a couple copies of dissipate, another reckoner, Sphinx's revelation. That is a. Uh, that is definitely a Sphinx's revelation for two coming up. That's nobody's friend. That's what I call that. What? Sphinx revelation for two. Yeah. That's no one's friend. That's no one likes not, that. No. No one likes five mana divinations. You see an overgrown tomb here from Will after his attack. But John has to do this. And you're going to see an Arbor Elf. So Will just sure. puts, it, yeah, Will just puts everything <laughs> on the mean, table. I mean, if he gets Wrath, he gets, yeah, he gets so much yeah, back. He gets three guys back. Who cares? Yeah. Rev for two by John. Land lands. Takes a draw step. Boros Reckoner. Reckoner. A handful of Rest in Pieces and Reckoners. And dissipates. And an extension of the hand. Will Craddock will be playing in the top eight today. Will be playing in the top I eight. I see what you did. Uh, I'm sorry. I 